What's going on everybody, Quaker here, back with another video. Today I'm bringing you Microsoft Maquette. Microsoft Maquette is a 3D VR, AR, pretty much XR, extended reality prototyping tool that you can use to just create interfaces and just whatever your mind can imagine for like the HoloLens and for VR and AR spaces. Uh, right now they don't seem to have interactable objects, elements, but it is coming. So let's take a look at what they currently have and see how, how useful it could be for creating these kind of new experiences. So here we are looking at Microsoft Maquette. Um, as you can see here, this is the main screen that comes up when you first open up the application. So if you go to next, you can see other little uh, things that people have created or basically the team at Microsoft that made Maquette has made. So you can see something like, uh, let's, look at, let's look at Robot Odyssey for this demo tutorial. So opening up demo right here. So this is Robot Odyssey. You can see just how crazy this looks just you could just see how much work is so you can see just how crazy this whole thing looks the way they've the way they've really set up everything and the way they've pulled everything together it just it's like perfect detail so going back so right off the top you're gonna see in my left hand here I have a bunch of things in front of me um, you can see there's a whole lot going on in front of me here these are the top half here is the different tools you can use to create this kind of space eventually when you put enough time to do it the bottom half here is like your utilities you can change the background and so on but i'm not going to change the background you can see here when i hit environment you can see you could choose different environment types to paint the paint the area make it look nicer you can choose show 3d background so you can see as i move my hand up and down you can kind of see a, a preview of how like say something the roof above you or the ceiling or the sky box will look um, in this kind of thing. Um, or you can hit show 3D background and you can see this space in 3D. It's not that I've actually opened it up. It's just it's showing you each space in 3D as if it was created, say, imagine if this was a movie set. And in a movie, you'll never see this whole area above you. But all you will see in the movie is that the movie looks amazing. So that's kind of how the idea of it looks like it is. Um, so starting here, you have your select tool, as you can see as I'm highlighting over them. You have your select tool, and basically that allows you to select different things. You can see here on my right thumb, this little joystick cursor thing. You can see it allows me to create things if I wanted to, but first I have to select something with it. So first I'll go to here, which is select, and then I'll go down here and go to assets. And you can see the different kind of assets here. I'm not gonna pick all of them, I'll just do a brief example. So let's say I want to do, I don't know, let's say I want to do this asset and I'm going to bring this asset. I'm going to make them small. You can make them bigger if you wanted to, but I'm going to keep it small. Um, I want this asset. I want another one. And then you see this magnet icon that when I get close to the asset, this magnet icon lights up and it allows me basically to snap an object onto another one. So if I press it, you can see it snapped it. So it's in that plane. It will always be in the same plane of existence of that top part of the object. Now, if I wanna just put it on, I can put it on, just, just drop it like that. There we go. Okay, hold on, there we go. So then clicking on it, after I've dropped down on it, you can see this button here, and this is the gimbal button, this highlighted button right there. I'm gonna try to aim it at it. This highlighted button here is the gimbal button. And what that does is allows me to fine tune exactly where things go. So if I want to get the exact access, axis where things are, you can fine tune it just like that. So if I want to just change the center point of it, if I want to cut it out, I can do that. I can, I can do a lot of fine tuning and it even kind of makes it a separate object. You can cut a separate object out of something else. Oops, let's put it up here. I hope the microphone is still in my face. So you can see there different objects, they have different effects. So let's say I want a person. If I want a a person, let's say this person's head, it kind of looks like Steven Sanofsky's head, it's weird. So if I want his head, I can actually make it bigger and, or smaller with this little joystick when I select it. So you can see the dimensions of it. If I want him to completely creep out anyone that's around me, I can do this and I can just, I could just make this guy massive. And it's just, he's massive. And the only way that I'd be able to really get closer is either walk closer or just teleport closer to him. So doing that, and then let's say I want to erase an object. So this is the eraser tool, and you can just select it, and it just sucks it up, and it erases it. I can't exactly erase him because i got to get closer to him in order to do that. 
and then you have the different options for the different tools too these are shortcuts too when you press this gear this little wrench icon you can quickly pick like your brush your eraser your your camera uh which kind of if you want to sample you can see it smiling from upside down um you can see your text tools your eyedropper your paint bucket and those pretty much align with exactly what's on the top half over here so it's basically telling you that you have the select tool you have your clone tool so if you want another another Sanofsky head you can do that um, you have your you have your brush your eraser your camera your text tool your eyedropper and your paint bucket tool so if I want to use the eyedropper I, I hover over it and then you can see that as I'm pointing you see the little line you can kind of see faintly a little line uh, pointing away from the pointer and you can see that it's the color of whatever the sand is or if I want to point it at the rock, it's pointing to that. Whatever color of Steven Sanofsky over there, giant mumbo head is right there. So if I want to do that, I can suck it up and then, wait, I could, there you go. I can suck it up and you can see that that's the paint dropper tool. And then, or if I want to select, I can select different things. The select tool, you have to be right up on it in order to do it. And as you can tell, I can't really move right now, but it works, trust me. Uh, you also have your paint bucket tool, which paints all the colors, anything, all those colors. So if I want everything to be orange, I hit paint all and then everything becomes orange. Every object on the ground becomes orange other than the skybox, which actually this looks pretty cool already. And I, I haven't even done anything. This kind of looks like a halo ring above, which is really interesting. So let me actually click away. So this kind of up there looks kind of like a halo ring. I didn't even I really didn't notice that. So going back. You got that, and then let's put another Sanofsky head just just for fun. Get Sanofsky right there. Let's get him. Let's give him a brother. So we're gonna put Sanofsky head number two, or we could surround like the the Stonehenge of the Stonehenge of Sanofsky. So we can do that, and then we can just do Stonehenge of Sanofsky. And now we got a whole bunch of Sanofskys just surrounding us. And then if I want the paint bucket, I can paint all that one color. And then everything becomes that color. Or if I want everything blue, I can also do that too. Change everything to blue. And then it gets really dark. Like this, this is kind of trippy. So then it's, it's really cool. So doing another thing, you got this button here. And if you press it, you can kind of select more. Two different colors and just extra things. Unselect does that too. And then you can change the cursor size just by wiggling it around. You also have here your more assets here. So you got gizmos. Basically, you can start how it looks. So you can start bot view. So you can start here that the, that the bot is looking at you and you can see we were just over there with the uh, Sanofsky hedge, kind of like Stonehenge of Steven Sanofsky heads. Um, you can hit the start view and that's where you would start off, which is right here. You can show viewpoints so you can see if you hit show viewpoints, you can see which where I'm looking, you know, what direction I'm looking right there. Uh, and then if you also go out of show viewpoints, that happens. Next thing here, you have scenes. So you can set different scenes that you want. So if you want you know, to set up different scenes that people can see representations of whatever is going on, you can see that happens too. And then also you have your labs here too, which basically allows you to just switch different navigation modes. This AR button is basically like, imagine if you were, imagine if you were creating uh, something for HoloLens. So if I click enable simulation, you can see that there's kind of a letterboxing effect around, let me shrink it a little bit so you can see it better. There's kind of this, this square around me right here. In fact, let me see if I can, there we go. I'm darkening it so you guys can see the square better. But you see the little square that is kind of, you know, in my vision. Now, the idea that I see for this is it is for if you are using an AR headset and right now AR headsets they don't show you like the full 360 view that say like an oculus or like a like a Vive would do like how this is most AR headsets they show you this right here they show you a smaller view of action it may be a square it may be a rectangle uh, it may be a slightly bigger rectangle but they don't show you everything at once so that's the idea for that and then I can turn on hologram occlusion too, so it get, makes it so much more vivid. And then you also have set local origin. You can change different coordinate systems. It basically allows you to fine tune a scene. Um, so that way, if you're trying to show it off to a client or a person, you can just kind of show them like, hey, this is how this works. And let me show you an example. So going back, I'm going to discard changes. Going back, let me show you one more thing 
of an idea that let's say you were actually going to create this thing for um, let's show you two ideas one idea is one I showed uh, when I failed at making this video before and then this other idea is something that you can make um, say if once they ha add interaction to this whole thing so the idea for the first one uh, it is called augmented city farm and basically what that's supposed to be is imagine if you are creating a vision of how the future would be if everyone had like AR goggles on where you could see more information than you usually would with your normal eyes like you know your normal eyes just see images but imagine if you could see whether your plants are about to die or different things like that or when you need to water them this is what augmented city farm is let's take a look I'm gonna jump straight to it Okay, so here we are. We are at Augmented City Farm. So you can see, I'm gonna hit this play button so that's out of the way. Everything is nice and clean. So you can see it says here, welcome to the farm of the future. Please go to the next scene to see the augmented reality. So it's telling me to use my right, hand, my left hand here and it's telling me to go to the right. So if I do that, oops, wait, wait. Hold on, let me start over. So this is Augmented uh, City Farm or whatever it was called. Uh, so basically, this is telling me this wasn't here. Um, this was here as the creator created is showing you what to do to see the next scene. So if I do that, let me actually go back and then let me go ahead to see the next scene. There we go. And then so you can see here, go back to play. So it's distraction free. You can see the different elements here. And basically, you can imagine this is an idea from this team that made this application. If you needed to treat your plants, this is a farm in augmented reality showing you what parts of the plant and what parts of the area need tending to. So in front of us here, before I accidentally bump into my microphone, in front of us here over there, you can see cabbage and they're showing you like this is a cabbage plant and it says it down there. You can see when it was last watered. So you can imagine if you close your eyes and imagine what if, you know, my mom gardens a lot. She's a like a vivid, an avid gardener. But it's hard to know which plant you just watered or not unless you're very into what you're doing. So this shows you that. And imagine it says seeded by John McLean as an example. So you can see that it was seeded, seeded date, last watered two days ago, harvest in 34 days. So this is like a reminder. Imagine if you're walking around and like, oh, yeah, imagine if you were walking around and like you could see different information about um your plants and how you could do it. And it's telling you like what parts of trees are dying, like leaves are dying. It's telling you different information. So like over there, you have your irrigation control. Basically, imagine if all these plants had irrigation and like that you automatically, you automate what area of plants gets more water than others. So that's the idea for like this augmented city farm. So now let's jump into the other idea that I was talking about before I close out this video. Okay, so here we are here in this kind of augmented reality interface that they came up with, the developers, the designers of this application came up with. And this is something that I kind of want to work on myself is once they release um, interactable elements, such as like touching things and they actually work. Right now, these are just proof of concept, so I can't actually touch this, so it won't do anything. Let me close this out. I can't actually do anything with this right now at all. Uh, none of this stuff will do anything. There's no other scene, so I can't actually see anything else either. But this is an, a, a really cool concept that kind of shows off like what, how, how you could possibly create a user interface for the future um, that doesn't involve your traditional keyboard and mouse. Um, all of it, imagine it being in AR. Um, so here it is. Imagine if you're in an aquarium or maybe this is just your 3D background. This is an aquarium. You can imagine the future if they continue making this application uh, these fish here that he had to create custom obviously a lot of them were copy and pasted from one uh, Model like those over there You can imagine These fish are moving and that's your desktop background Whereas right now our desktop background is usually static 
Yes, you can put videos in it if you try hard enough, but right now our desktops are all just static pictures. You can imagine if these were moving around you and you can see everything. Imagine if rather than you having to have little taskbar at the bottom, you could just have like your people over here, which is this is they're calling this application Teams, which is Microsoft Teams. You're having your apps here, so these are all your apps. And then over here is your inbox, so these are your emails, and you can sort your emails real easily. And then over here is your actual work that you're doing. This is OneNote. So you can see, you can imagine the different things that you could do with here. And it kind of looks like a Mickey Mouse at the bottom, which is really weird. Uh, but you can imagine the kind of ideas that you could bring out once they release um, the interactable elements part. And you can see Maquette's symbol right there in the middle right there. So yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to show you guys. I wanted to show you guys just Microsoft Maquette in its wholesome and just roughly looking through um, the kind of things you could create in it just to inspire people who may have a VR headset to just create and just make some interface and just see how things could go because you never know how things could go in the future. Yeah, my name is Kwaku and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, it was kind of not really all over the place, but it was more fun to do because these are the kind of things I always look forward to is these kind of what if in terms of the future, what will things look like type of thing. So stay tuned for more. If you have an application that you want me to take a look at, whether you made it or you have a recommendation, let me know. I'd love to take a look at it and uh, take care, everybody.